Yo guys, what is up? I hope you're all doing great. So in today's video, we're gonna talk with my friend Ida, who is half Chinese, half Danish, about growing up in China. So Ida moved to China when she was only 16, and I'm basically gonna ask her what it was like for her moving from Denmark to China. What was her relationship with China as half Chinese? My idea of China beforehand, like it was a little strange. Biggest misconceptions that her Danish friends had about China. And in general her experience living in both second tier city Tianjin and then moving to a first tier city Shanghai. Also we're gonna briefly discuss the subject of no age limit for drinking in China so keep watching if you want to find out. So I feel like in the beginning we should say that you're half Chinese half Danish but you grew up in Denmark so you lived in Denmark your whole life until you moved to China right? Well yeah no I lived in Indonesia and Singapore when I was a like very young i think like four years or something i just and realized we talked about it last week and i was like yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you never lived in china you grew up in denmark right well so then i grew up in denmark and then we went to china like for high school i went to china and then i had a gap year afterwards so that was four years and then i came back to denmark for university so how old were you when you moved to china 16 16. Yeah, I think okay. 16. So what was your reaction when your parents like started telling you that you might be moving? Was it like sudden or was it like, you know, a slow process? Uh, like half a year before or something like that. That's um, short. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was long. They had probably thought about it for longer, but no, I did not want to move. You didn't want to <laughs> move? No, because it was like, you know, it was like an age where like, Cause then I was going to be away from all my friends, you know, and most of them were going to the same high school, you know, and we were like in the process because in Denmark, you have to apply to go to high school. I don't know if that's the same other places, but we were in the process of all applying and we we're like, you know, mostly going to go to the same place. And then my parents told me, no, actually we're going to move to China. Oh so my God. Like, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Can I yeah, swear? I'm yeah, sorry. of course you can swear. It's not TV. <laughs> I mean, that's my freaking YouTube channel. Who cares? Okay, so your parents told you that you're going to be moving to China. Have you been to China before just like for traveling since your mom is from China? Yeah, yeah. So we've been there lots of times before, like, but it was mostly Beijing and then Shenyang, which is where she's from. I think it was like maybe every third or fourth year, like summer, we would go there and then we'd just spend all summer there. So when you moved, you were supposed to move to Tianjin, right? Yes. Yeah. And I was actually, when I, lo I looked Tianjin up because I wanted to ask you, like, how was it like living in a smaller Chinese city? And then I was like 15 million people. That's like three times yeah, the size yeah, yeah. of Denmark. Yeah. So that's not very small. No, it's not very small, but... Um, I think, I mean, because, you know, we lived in a like really international community. So, and I went to an international high school um, with people from all over. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, you know, when I say like, yeah, I went to high school in China, people immediately saying, oh, then you've been really immersed into like a Chinese society and, and community, you know, but actually um, we all mostly spend time with foreigners both at school and when you're hanging out and our parents also all like mostly spend time with foreigners because that's the because you don't know anyone so when you first get there like let, that's the community that you get to know mm -hmm. um and you know of course like when we're just going to school then we have all of our international friends there so it was a really like international community it wasn't like you know if people think oh you're going to go to a chinese school and you're going to learn chinese you know like it, it, it's not really like that so yeah, so I think when I think about my high school years there, it's mostly, you know, what made those years were like my friends and like this international um, community there. Yeah. Like, so if I went back now, it would be completely different because those people aren't there. So when you first moved to China, what shocked you the most? I think my biggest surprise was just actually how amazing it was and you know just i mean because i don't remember those years where i lived abroad when i was a kid because i was so young yeah um and i was just surprised by how amazing it was meeting so many different people before i always had a bit of a weird relationship like you know relationship with china because i mean you know i liked it because it, it, it was a part of my mom's side and like my family but 
it was just always a little like China was just strange to me. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's understandable as a kid or you're a teenager, but still a teenager is not an adult yet. And China is so different to Denmark. I mean, it couldn't yeah. be more different. Like, yeah, the thing is, you know, when I, when I visited, when I was a kid, like I spoke very little Chinese, you know, it's like we, I would pick up on it, um, relatively fast because you're a kid. Like my sister was way better. Um, but so it was for, so for me, China was just like going there for, um, like the whole summer, you know, every third or fourth year and then meeting a bunch of people who I couldn't really talk with because, you know, they were speaking Chinese and I just didn't really know them that well. So my idea of China beforehand, like it was a little strange. I don't really know why exactly or how. So I just want to say that it's totally understandable that China would seem strange for a kid from Denmark. You know what I mean? Like how yeah. the Danish streets look like, you know, and but it's, not, it's not really in that way. Like, it's not the fact that they're so different, because I think that's how you would feel if you didn't have any relationship to China, but you just as a, like, kid from wherever in the world went to China, and then you feel like that would be the strange thing. But for me, it was more like, it was weird because I knew that I had family there, but I didn't feel close to them. I couldn't even communicate with them, really. There was just something, I don't know, weird for me as a kid. I totally understand that, because that's also how I felt about Poland. Like, yeah. of course, my situation is a little different. I had more connection to Poland because I lived there until I was 12, right? And it's still closer yeah. to Denmark, so I would visit all the time. But I almost yeah. felt at some point, like, it's this, like, part of me that I don't know that well yet. I, I don't exactly. know. It was a bit strange, but it was, it was, like, something I'd never done before. And it really, how do you say, like, I really grew from it. It makes sense. Yeah. I just wanted to agree with what you're saying. But you know, what you said with the fact that you were in an international community and you're meeting people from everywhere in China, right? Like, that's something I also loved about China. And that's something that some people dislike. You know, those foreigners who keep saying that as a foreigner in China, you're in this foreign bubble and you shouldn't be in a foreign bubble. And I'm like, okay, on one hand, if you are, you know, not learning the local language, you don't want to try Chinese food, you're being whatever, close-minded, then yes, that's a wrong bubble. But yeah. if you just have your foreign friends and you're still trying to, you know, get into Chinese culture, like, why is it wrong? You know, I love being in international environments in China. I think that's so fun. I mean, I think it also just depends on what your goal is with going to that country. I mean, of course, I understand, like, it's a bit weird going to a foreign country if you have absolutely no incentive, like if you have absolutely no, you know, desire to get to know that culture because then you might as well stay at home, right? Yeah, of course. Um, so that I get, but no, I agree with you. Like, of course you're going to have uh, like an international community as well and like friends, you know. I mean, I think it's just, I think that's just normal human nature that you also want to, you know, try and like be with people that you maybe feel are a bit closer to you and like culture wise mm -hmm. or something like this. Um, but yeah, I think it's a balance. Yeah. There were all some people who seriously had lived there for like 10 years and didn't speak a word of Chinese. No, that's of course wrong. I mean, that's ignorance. I feel like it's about respect as well. Like, you know, you're in that country, like try and engage with that community and like learn the language i mean i did when i when i got there i also took a chinese class just you know so i could improve my chinese and like so when you go down to the local shop you can actually talk with them you know just also for yourself it's nice when you're in a new country that you can actually read the road maps or like figure your way around because you can actually read a little bit and or if you you know you can talk with the local community i mean it's just or if you go to a restaurant you can actually read what's on the menu it's also just nice for yourself i think so how would you say school in china was different to school in denmark i mean i know you went to a international school which is obviously also different than a normal tr traditional chinese school uh, yeah. But like, how was it different for you? Just in every single way that it could be different. It was really. Like, um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that struck me the most, like immediately, was that in Danish schools, 
they are, um, I think the students have more responsibility and like they have more freedom, but you know, then they also have more responsibility for their own learning and also just like showing up in class, like things like this, because here it was very strict, you know, I mean, they like, first of all, you know, when I came into my first classroom on the first day and I think I called, I think the first teacher I met, his name was, well, I shouldn't say his name here, but, <laughs> but anyway, I just called him by his, um, you know, his name because I would, like, I didn't call him by his surname because, you know, in Denmark, you just shout out, you know, like, hey, what's up, Maria, yeah. what her name is, <laughs> you yeah. know? So I, I just said like, hey, you know, whatever, Andy, Michael, yeah, Michael. hey, Michael, and then, and then he was like, we uh, call, you, you know, here you call your teacher by Mr. Mrs. or, you know, sir or something. And so then I had to learn all the teachers like last names instead, you know? Yeah. Um, but also just like, if you weren't going to come to class, I mean, you could, that wasn't even a thing. Like you just should always come to class. But like, if you were sick, for instance, like the school would contact your parent, you know, where like in Denmark, it's like, you know what, when you're 16 years old, like you need to start taking your like more responsibility, you know, like being more responsible. You really had to study hard um, to get a good grade. I studied the IB and compared to Denmark, you know, where I, they're always talking about here in Denmark, there's like an inflation of, of the grade A plus. Yeah. Um, whereas here, like we really had to, you know, like slave. I mean, <laughs> it was hard work. You hear a lot about Chinese students studying a lot and not having a lot of free time, but I don't know if that was like necessary the case with you because you know, you were in international school. No, we did on weekends. Like we definitely also had time to go out and party and just hang out you know <laughs> yeah you know what i heard once i don't know if it's true and i've never checked it that apparently there is no age limit on alcohol in china but that sounds like a bullshit i heard that, <laughs> I heard that too I'm not, i never checked it actually no, but i've heard that too um, i wonder if it's true that would be fun, fun, funny funny <laughs> <laughs> so since you are half chinese half danish have you ever experienced like any funny situations or or not funny situations with people like i don't know being confused where you're from or stuff like that especially because i feel like in china people but can be sometimes like quite direct in a way mm -hmm. in a different way you know how like in china it's like more okay to tell someone you're fat yeah <laughs> yeah my family they always say i have oh your fingers are so fat um, <laughs> I guess they are, but like don't tell me you know i know they're fat so did it ever happen to you like especially in the beginning when your chinese was not that good that people just like speak Chinese to you straight away and you didn't understand? Yeah, sometimes. And then, you know, I got some friends who who had been in China longer than me, like when I just came. And then sometimes we would go out. Then if we go into a shop, then they talk to me. But actually their Chinese was better than mine. And then so my friend would answer in Chinese to them. But they but the like the guy would still keep talking to me, you know? <laughs> And I'm like, I don't really, it's not that great yet. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel any difference, um, like, moving from Tianjin to Shanghai, that Shanghai was much bigger? Because, like, that's what I thought in the beginning. But then when I figure out that there is, like, 50 million people in Tianjin, then I'm like, do you even feel a difference, you know? Yeah. It's not just, like, just another big city. I think the biggest difference was, was probably that um, in Shanghai, there are way more foreigners actually the amount of like foreign restaurants you know and more people speak english i think that's the biggest difference if you would have to live in china again would you want to live in shanghai or would you like want to try or would you go back to tianjin or like try another chinese city i really love shanghai um <laughs> I'm like, I mean, whenever someone says Shanghai, I'm like, yeah. So you sort of already touched on it, but do you feel like living in China at such a young age shaped you as the person? I think it definitely did. And definitely for the positive. I just became a lot more confident and outgoing. And I just, I got more courage, I think, to just throw myself out there, you know? And now I'm like, well, if I don't really know where I am, that's fine. I'll figure it out. You know, if I don't really know an answer, that's fine. I'll figure it out. You know, I, like, 
I think you just grow so much from just being thrown into a situation. You don't know what the hell's going on, but you know, you just got to figure it out. Um, and just meeting people from different cultures, you know, all these very cliche answers, like, but it's true, you know, it, is. it really shapes you. And you just, you're so much more open-minded. Having lived in a different country, you really understand how then it must be when other people come to like your country i think you just understand other people better and you're just you're just a lot more open-minded because and you know you're challenged in 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 like your own perspectives and beliefs and that is very very healthy for any person always to be challenged and like it makes you also wonder about your own own ways and behaviors you know why do you do these things and i think if 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 more people had the experience of of living in a different country and I, and then you know maybe opening up more towards people who have different traditions and cultures from you it would just make the world a better place <laughs> wow. i mean for sure for sure sometimes even though you know certain things you know even though we all know cultures are different, we all have different customs, whatever, it's not yeah. enough to know until you really experience it. Okay, so my last question is, did you ever experience at, like your friends having any like funny misconceptions about China? Because I could imagine, especially since you were young, when like you would tell your friends that you're leaving for China or you're already there, did you ever experience people thinking some funny stuff about China that are not necessarily true like the first thing that came to my mind was just that like people you know their first response would be like oh they have rice fields <laughs> you know it's like i've um, never seen rice fields in china i mean i know there are rice fields in china i just never been much to rural china like yeah. i've only traveled around big cities and it's not like you can see those rice fields there no you know like it's not it's not just people walking around with like these straw hats <laughs> You know, someone asked me once when I was in China and I was learning to write, did I use the, oh, I forgot the word in English, but not a pen, but you know, like the thing that you use to paint pictures. Oh, like a brush. A brush. Yeah. <laughs> if I used a brush <laughs> and I was like, no, I was using a pen. Because, you know, in, in, in TV, you would see those people sitting there and like painting characters. And, but that, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not necessarily the case. I hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you liked it. And let me know in the comments if you liked the video, if you think it was interesting. And if you have any ideas for who I should interview next, I would love to interview more people. And yeah, I'll see you soon.